when I started this channel, I I wanted to kind of like highlight more obscure cases, you know, the really strange ones. But this one was so strange that I actually thought maybe I shouldn't make a video about it. What would you do if you looked in the mirror and the person looking back at you, you didn't recognize? For a relatively healthy man in Arkansas, this scenario became all too real after his sighting of a UFO. This is the strange case of Charles Munt. It was mid-August 1977. Office worker Charles Munt had just returned to his Flaxton home from his job. It was a quarter past nine at night and he was feeling tired. He remembered that the windows in his car were down, and thinking it might rain, he decided to go back outside and roll them up. Conveniently, Munt had parked just outside the front door, so it wasn't much of a walk. After he rolled them up and locked the vehicle, he began to make his way back inside. That is when something caught his eye. About the height of the treetops, Munt spotted some lights zigzagging wildly at a tremendous speed. The movements were so fast that Munt thought they might actually be lightning bolts, but he ruled this out as they did not behave like lightning. He then wondered if they might be light bugs or fireflies, but as he watched, the lights seemed to increase in size, which caused him to rule out the idea of insects. What could it be, he wondered. As he stared, the lights continued to grow in size, and he began to make out shapes around the lights. He realized then that they were crafts of some kind. The luminosity they gave off was such that it illuminated both the sidewalk and the garden of Munt's house, as if it were daytime. Munt had not seen anyone when he went outside and thought that he was alone. He looked around quickly to check if anyone might be seeing what he was seeing, and that's when he spotted them. Lit up by the objects above, two men could clearly be seen standing under one of the trees in his yard. The objects were moving about directly above this tree. The two men were dressed in black suits and were very similar in appearance. Munt attempted to say something to them but found he couldn't. In fact, he couldn't do anything. He was paralyzed. Munt noticed that one of the black-suited men was staring directly at him. He described his gaze as, quote, cold, noting that it was icy and full of indifference. Suddenly, as if reacting to a command, both men simultaneously turned their backs on Munt and walked off. He lost sight of them in the darkness outside the light. It was at that precise moment when Munt had the sensation that lightning was passing through him from head to toe, and he began to feel an intermittent vibration that ran through his entire body. Then a strange tingling began to invade him. Munt, speaking to Argentinian researcher Fabio Zerpa, noted, It was not unpleasant nor did it cause me terror or panic. I simply felt as if I were not myself. Something altered my biological rhythm. After a period of time, Munt suddenly found himself free from the vibrations and luminosity. He immediately rushed inside his home. Then things got weird. Upon entering his house, Munt ran to his wife, Lisa, he was anxious to tell her of the lights and what had just happened to him. She, instead of paying attention to her husband's story, looked at him as if she'd never seen him before in her life. At some point, she stopped him and asked who he was and what he wanted. She acted toward him the same way you would if a stranger entered your home unannounced. She had no idea who he was, and Munt found this deeply bizarre. Lisa Munt immediately went to the front door, peeked her head out, and knocked. Charles, Charles, get in here, she yelled. Some guy just walked into the house. Charles Munt could not understand what was going on. How did she not know who he was? Was this a prank? Charles would soon be confronted with the reason for his wife's strange behavior. As his wife waited at the door for his return, Charles turned and walked over to a mirror and was surprised by what he saw. The face staring back at Munt was not his own. 
I bear witness to God that the face in the mirror was not my true face, he told Zerpa. He didn't know who it was, but it wasn't him. Nowadays, months after the event, I have realized that the composition of my molecules have been changed and someone has occupied my physical place. My face and my body are the face and body of another man. The reality of the situation set in. Munt told Zerpa that the switch upended his life. He eventually lost everything. His wife would not accept him as her husband and left him. His co-workers did not recognize him, which affected his relationship with them. I have lost my identity. I know I'm Charles Munt, but no one believes me, he insisted to Zerpa. Fabio Zerpa wrote of this case in his 1979 book, The Real Men in Black and UFOs. What a bizarre story. It seems like something straight out of the Twilight Zone, a man waking up in a body not his own. But this case, if real, suggests that the visitors are capable of much more than we realize. I've covered accounts involving body swapping in the past, which is truly a fringe aspect of the UFO phenomenon, but they do exist and it doesn't serve anyone to simply ignore them. While most can be explained away as Capgris delusion or Capgris syndrome, this one falls outside the norm as everyone directly involved, multiple people, seem to be aware of and directly affected by the switch. Albert Rosales himself found the case to be a little fantastical, but he acknowledged that he'd heard stranger over the years. He noted that Zerpa was a decent and respected researcher, and he wasn't prone to propping up fictional cases, so there must have been some aspect of Munn's case that he was able to corroborate before publishing it in his book. At least I hope so. I do wonder how Zerpa, an Argentinian researcher, came to talk to a man from Arkansas about his encounter. It's possible, I guess, that he had been referred to him by another researcher, but Zerpa does not fill in this detail, sadly. One aspect of the encounter that I found intriguing was the inclusion of the two men in black suits, or the men in black. His sighting of these men was just prior to the sensation of being hit by lightning, which I can only assume was when the body swap took place. Or he had been taken, but Munt doesn't mention any missing time in his report, so I'm not sure. Was the body swap a result of him seeing them? Had he been chosen ahead of time, or was he chosen completely at random? What exactly was the purpose of the switch? What were the visitors looking to accomplish outside of completely destroying his life? It does seem like the appearance of the men in black was directly related to the strange objects, and I can only assume that they had been deposited there on the ground from one of the crafts. Though Munt admits that he never saw this, so it's also possible that they had arrived there ahead of time and were merely witness to the event, incapable of halting it, but aware of the significance of it. According to Fabio Zerpa, as of his releasing of his book in 1979, Munt remained trapped in this other person's body, every day peering into a mirror and seeing a stranger looking back at him. 